Hello, I'm Martin Gooch and I'm going to give you some tips on directing to make your next project better. Let me ask you a question. What's your favourite film? Hands up and uh, what's your favourite film? Uh, Titanic, okay. Blade Runner, okay. Once Upon a Time in the West, okay. Kelly's Heroes, good one, I like that. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, okay. Godfather, yeah, if you like that. Uh, what else? Any other films? The Piano, yes, that's a good film. Got an Oscar, I believe. Uh, what else? Something by Chris Nolan. Mm, okay, that's up to you. Blues Brothers, great film. Alien, yeah, that's a good film. Uh, okay, so what do those films all have in common? It's not the lead actor, uh, it's not the director, it's not the budget. What do they have in common? It's the script. Script, script, script. The script is the most important part of your film and often it's also one of the cheapest parts because if you're the writer director you're paying yourself nothing just write it and once you've written it the most important thing about screenplays is leaving them alone i honestly suggest once you've written it whether it takes a day a year two years six years then when you've finished it walk away go on holiday print it out leave it alone and then come back to it after three or four days or a week and it will be like someone else has written it because you will have forgotten loads of nuances in it and then get some actors and read it out loud now with zoom and skype and everything like that you can do it online we had a, a read through of my latest project the other day it took one evening to organize so the fear of organization is often something that uh, puts directors off doing something but have a read through with actors not your friends with actors uh, and uh, or maybe your friends who are actors but actors and what a read through will do is first of all you'll hear it and quite often when you hear a screenplay you'll notice repetition or when it's boring or when it's too complicated and no one understands what's going on or if the dialogue is too long and all those things you sit down straight away fix 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 change them your script is better because the whole point is the better your script is when you start filming your film will be better you don't want to fix errors in your script on set you don't want to fix errors in your script with the actors arguing about dialogue on set and you don't want to fix errors in your script in the edit when you edit the whole thing together and you go oh my god in that scene we've said exactly the same thing as in that scene one of those scenes has to go but uh that could be a terrible you know, and you think oh i'll bring them together but they might not work because they may be different continuity and they may have different clothes on script 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 also the other important thing about script structure 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 so important to keep a film interesting there are books and books and books written about it so i'm not going to talk about that now but number one get your script as good as you possibly can before you start pre-production not before you start shooting before you start pre-production because if in one of your scenes in your script you have to have a particular costume and then your wardrobe person or you go out and get your costume and then in the final draft of the script you don't have that costume because that scene's been cut or changed then you wasted all that time script 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 it's the most important thing okay on set when you're a director on set you have five main tasks two of them most directors completely forget about the first one is directing the actors that's your principal job uh, is to get the performance out of the actors now directing actors the thing about directing actors is they're just ordinary human beings i know it can be difficult to believe it at times but they are and what they want from a director is to be told what they're expected to do. It's very, very simple. Uh, if you're, uh, people say that directors are a bit like the captain of a ship. Mm, it's sort of a true, but it's a false analogy. Uh, because when you're a director, you are not really the captain of the ship, you're the ship. Mm, how's that for an analogy? I like it, I might use it again. What actors want from you, the director, is to be told what they're going to do. If you've hired good actors, they will have already learnt their lines and they will have stagecraft. Stagecraft is all about doing the same thing again and again and again. Now, for example, if we're doing a take and in, I'm the actor and in this scene I, go, I say my lines, my lines, my lines, my lines, my lines, my lines, and then we cut and then we do another take and in the second take we go my lines, my lines, my lines, my lines, my lines, my lines, 
you will have noticed that I changed coffee cups in my hands between the two takes. This is a real pain in the edit when you're in the edit. You want actors who have uh, the ability to learn their lines and act, but stagecraft is very, very useful. Using non-actors, although I've got nothing against it, if they're good, they won't have stagecraft. They won't hit their marks, they'll be looking for their mark when they're trying to stop and they will get their stagecraft uh, wrong. You may not notice continuity errors until you're in the edit, which is a nightmare because you'll suddenly realise you can't use both those takes because he swaps hands halfway through. What an idiot! And you'll be cursing the actor in the edit but it's your fault because you didn't notice it on set. Now I find as a director my style is not really to tell the actors uh, how to say their lines but I tell them what emotional state they are in in their brain when they're saying their lines. So I'll say okay remember you've just come from the funeral of your pet snake so you're really a bit upset about poor old hissing Sid he's passed away okay here we go roll camera okay and action and uh, rather than saying I want you to go so oh, Sid, Sid, because it's not only is it insulting to the actor that you're trying to tell them how to act because they went to drama school for 10 years and whatever, but uh, they'll never be able to do it how you've said it because they, they've got a different mouth for obviously or maybe a different sex or from another planet, who knows. So it's usually best just to give an indication of the world in which the actor is inhabiting mentally when they say the line. Also giving the actor space and time to work and prepare if it's an emotional scene you've got to give the actor enough time to get into the right emotional space. Uh, it's very difficult for someone just to go happy to sad like that though there are actors who can do it but most of the time you need to give them a little bit of time and put that into your schedule so that they can uh, prepare and give you the performance that you really want. Now when you say cut as a director you must know if it's good bad or indifferent. If it's indifferent, fair enough, a lot of TV uh, is indifferent, but if it's good, it's good. If it's bad and you want to do it again, tell them. Don't just go, okay, we're going again, we're going again, and action. You've got to say why you're going again. This is a real pet peeve of mine from when I was in the camera department. Directors would go, okay, we're going again, we're going again, uh, and the actors would say, what's different? They go, nothing's different, nothing's different, just do it again, just do it again. And you, you think, well, what's the point in doing it again if it's not different? Then you need to say, if the focus is off, the camera had a wobble, the boom was in shot, or anything like that, those are all valid points to do it again. If it's actor related, if the performance was bad, or the eye line was wrong, or they were off the edge of the frame, then tell the actor because they'll just do the same thing again if you don't tell them what you need to change. So for example if the actor fluffed the line say uh, okay we're going again actor please could and usually use their name uh, John John actor could you please just say that line a little bit more clearly you said the word uh, coffee uh, you coughed during coffee could you just say it again please thank you very much okay everybody here we go uh, roll cameras action and uh, and do it like that I don't believe in shouting on set because as I said before it should be fun uh, but I do believe in uh, in keeping it contained and keeping it running. When it stops and everyone's standing around for coffee, always have a look around and think, why are we all standing around for coffee? Because people will just stand around and wait until you tell them what to do. You'll have actors in a little conclave of actors standing around by the coffee machine talking about the last thing they're on and whether they've ever met Tom Cruise. And you'll have the camera department talking about the James Bond film they really wanted to work on and everybody talking about their things. And you'll be standing there going, why aren't we working? What's happening? What's the hold up? And everyone goes, oh, sorry, 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 there's no hold up. We're all waiting for the other department. So even though it's the, possibly the AD's responsibility, it's also your responsibility because it's your film and every minute lost is a minute lost. And yes, you need to go to the toilet and have a cup of tea every now and then and sit down and maybe even asleep at lunchtime, but keep it running. The most important thing is talking to your actors. Most actors when they complain about a bad director it's purely because the director didn't talk to them. The director is worried too much about other things like pressure from producers, budget, time etc, all those things. And, but often the director is looking at the background. They'll be looking at the CGI, the sets, the costume, the wardrobes, whatever, and not looking at the foreground, which is the performance. And the foreground is what we engage with most as audience members. So as a director, don't be scared to talk to your actors. If an actor does a take you don't like, don't just say, that's shit, that's rubbish, do it again. Uh, tell them what was wrong with it and they will adapt and they'll do it again. If you do more than six takes for anything, something is wrong 
and uh, it's too complicated, it's too difficult, there's too many camera moves, the focus is too difficult, or the actor isn't up to it, or you've given the actor too many directions. You can over direct. If you say, okay, as you pick the cup up, I need you to look slightly to the left. And then as you pick the camera up, I need you to look slightly to the right. And then pick up the CD and put it down, drink your coffee, say your lines. It's too much for an actor to remember whilst they're concentrating on performance. So keep it simple. Keep your direction straightforward. It should already, a lot of it should already be in the script and in your planning so people know what they're doing and then get on with it and shoot it. it uh, the first take often uh, yeah, you need uh, development. You can always do better but once you've got it do one for safety if you have to and move on. There's no point in doing uh, 20 takes for things. I know there's stories about famous film directors who've done 150 takes, but there really was no point in doing that. There's many reasons why it happened. I was on a set with a director who took over 200 takes of one thing, and that's because they were mad and they were insane. And the final take that we actually used was about take number four. Just don't tell him. All right, okay, that's actors. Number two is directing the camera, telling the cameraman, cinematographer, cinematographer woman where to put the camera to get the coverage you want. Now there is a difference between coverage and shooting cinema. Shooting coverage is just covering the actors or the action. So if a car's driving along, we just stick a camera there and the car drives along. That's not cinema. Cinema is working out where to put the camera to make it look the most dramatic and the most interesting. A lot of films I watch these days and especially TV is just shot coverage. They just cover the action. They don't shoot cinema. It's different. And if you don't know what it is, go and find it out on someone else's video. Uh, so directing the actors, directing the camera, directing the screenplay. Now you will have your screenplay on set and you will be going through it. And if you've got a budget, you will have an assistant with you uh, who will help you with this. But you need to make sure that you direct the script. Because if you spend all that time writing the script, then when you direct it, it's got to be good. It's very easy to miss things on your script when you're so incredibly busy on the day because you'll have a thousand other things and a hundred people asking you questions. It's very easy to miss stuff. You must direct the script. And also directing the script doesn't just mean covering every single word and action and line. It means the essence, the themes of the script continue them going. If, for example, a, 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 a colour theme in your script is yellow and you come to a scene and there's no yellow in it, then you need to direct the script by putting yellow into it somehow. Maybe they have a banana, maybe they wear a yellow uh, uh, t-shirt or they have a yellow coffee cup. This isn't yellow but there's an illustration of me not directing my own script. Cheers. Directing the screenplay. And the last two uh, elements of directing which are really important everyone forgets are directing the budget and directing to schedule. Now if you only have a limited budget and in your first scene on your first day shooting you spend all your money on an explosion or a big costume or, or, or some sort of scene with a tank in it then you have no money to direct the rest of your film. And people say oh no that's the producer's job. Yes maybe on a big budget film but most of you won't be directing big budget films you'll be on small budget films or no budget films or micro budget films and uh spending your budget sensibly is really important. If there's a really expensive item in it, say your whole film is about a, a magic wand, then you probably need to spend a little bit of your budget making sure that magic wand is believable and uh, really works in the context of your film. Now if if you spend all your money on the magic wand and it's a minor item and it's in for one shot and, then, and not again, that is a waste of your budget. If you don't have much money you spend all your money on a big crane shot, that is a waste of your budget. If you don't have much money and you spend all of your money on a famous actor who's only in it for one second, that is probably a waste of your budget unless they're going to tweet all the time about your film. And trust me, 99% of the time they won't because by the time your film comes out they'll be on not the next film but the film after the next film and they will have forgotten all about your film. They'll be glad to see their name is in IMDb again. They'll be glad to see their name on a poster but mostly they'll just uh, be happy the film is complete and they'll have moved on because they'll have other um, uh, commitments by that point and also probably someone paying them more to do something else. And lastly directing to 
schedule it's so important it's so important plan 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 as a director when you turn up on set after you've had your cup of tea or coffee or whatever you have vegan tree juice i don't know once you've had your vegan tree juice and you're on set you must know what you're going to do before i was a director i was a camera assistant the first ac focus puller for a long time and i was amazed at how many directors would walk on set and not know what they're going to do they would spend one two three four hours standing around not knowing what to do saying so what are we going to do now uh what's happening this should never ever 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 happen if especially if it's your own film and you spend your own time and your own money you must be prepared to shoot the second you walk on set. Obviously it takes time to set cameras up, get actors into wardrobe, makeup, and then once they're all on set, read through the script. I just say, let's have it. Okay, everybody, let's have a read through. We'll go through, we'll run lines to make sure everybody knows all the lines, we know the action, and then we'll start to block it. Blocking it is working out where your actors are going to stand or where they enter the frame, leave the frame, and how they do their uh, uh, performance. Uh, once you've blocked it, blocking can take a long time, but it is part of the process. Otherwise, you just have two actors standing there, they face each other, say their lines, and walk out. Very, very boring, very theatrical. And you see that a lot uh, uh, in directors who are not very good or at the beginning of their career. Two actors just stand there like that and talk to each other and then one of them will go. It's really boring. And if that's happening, you might as well just go to the theatre and watch that. Uh, I'm not demeaning theatre, I'm just saying it's a different medium. Cinema is all about moving. It's all about movement because we can cover it from every angle and now with drones and cranes and all sorts of things you can shoot from above and below and uh, GoPros you can stick the camera in your mouth or in, on your t-shirt on your head and get a POV. Be creative uh, but be creative before you get on set so you know what you're doing because every minute lost is a minute lost. Time is our greatest ally and I but is also our greatest foe. Schedule, schedule, schedule and once you've got it keep to that schedule. Every single shot in your movie does not have to look fantastic and if it does people will come out and go oh my god it was all fantastic but if you make every shot every now and then super fantastic people will come out and go oh my god that scene with the shed or the or the socks or the snow or whatever it was was amazing. If you keep it too beautiful honestly people will it wash over them if you keep it slightly beautiful and then very beautiful they'll pick up on that and if it looks rubbish the whole time people will just say it looked rubbish the whole time but it will look rubbish because you didn't plan it also when you're on set you should be having fun it'll be stressful it'll be exciting it might be the first time you've ever done it in your life or the hundredth time you've done it in the life in your life but you must have fun it's such a difficult career to get into it's such a difficult career to make money out of when you're there take a moment when everything's being set up when they're laying a track or the actors are rehearsing or they're building a set just stand there for a second look around take it all in and think how lucky you are to be on that set and how exciting it is to have achieved this incredible ambition of being director on a film your film somebody else's film a tv show commercial doesn't matter when you're on set take that moment just a few seconds just to appreciate how wonderful it is to be directing moving pictures with wonderful actors and wonderful crew i'm martin gooch and i support the iowa indie film festival it's a great festival thank you very much have a lovely time cheers